Hey guys, I am in the kitchen. I am cooking dinner for Noel William. I've got me some uh, fried chicken, asparagus. Ugh, I'm going, I'm going crazy. French fries, I am so good at it. Hey, I just want to hit something. It's just been, it's been hitting my spirit. Um, and again, don't take anything I say uh, for where go look at things and study them. Um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the terms orthopraxy or orthodoxy or orthopraxy, it's the difference between practice and doctrine. And you know, Second Peter and Jude, um, they're addressing practice. They're not address addressing doctrine. You know, I've been accused many times through the years of being um, heretical uh, or false prophet or whatever. Recently, even by some brothers. Uh, and you know that stuff hurts deeply and so then i've got to stop and i've got to look my own wife is being called a heretic which is hilarious um in its sense because she is my southern baptist little word girl man she loves the the word of god which i love everything is in the text everything is in the word it's it's beautiful all the things um but look when you call somebody a heretic because you are religious, because it's not, it doesn't feel comfortable to you. You know, all these people going through deconstruction. I was on the phone today, a long time with my old YWAM buddies that he's going through deconstruction. He's in his early eighties and he's just questioning everything he's taught and discipled and all the things, which I love, I think it's beautiful. Um, but look, Peter's addressing practice. He's addressing idolatry. He's addressing people that want wealth. Uh, they were they were in sexual immorality. They were practicing all of these things that weren't lining up with what Jesus taught and what Jesus wants us to do um, in, in obedience and in life and in holiness and in the fear of the Lord. And so when you call somebody a heretic and when you are so judgmental, make sure you go sit with the Father yourself and go, okay, Father, are why am I the judge? Why am I the person who gets to call every, all the false prophets and the false teachers out? Why don't I go explore a little bit and get in the scripture, understand the text, understand the audience that Jesus was talking to and how he always ties that back to something in the Old Testament. Um, understand the region that he was in. So we know like we're a very pharisaical society, especially in evangelicalism, if that's a good word in the Western church. We love our comfort and we love to judge and we like our comfort zone. And if that, if anything said, so people like Richard Rohr, look, I love Rohr stuff on initiation. It's such a good introduction for young men into becoming a man. I love a lot of his stuff. I also spit out his universalism and some of the faults, some of the things I just don't agree with, but I'm not anti Richard Rohr. I'm pro Richard Rohr, right? I'm not anti anything. I'm not anti the, the, the prophet faith guys that, you know, prosperity and buy some jets off of ties. Listen, some of those guys are repenting. Creflo Dollar repented a couple days ago for his false teaching on tithing. He said tithing is not even in the new covenant, the new Testament. He's right. It's about extravagant, extravagant giving not taking money from people so I can go buy a $65 million jet, right? So we could call everybody false prophets. We could judge. We can be the judge and all the things. But look, this is about unity and life together. This is about us doing this as one body, as, as the bride of Christ. And so if there's something I say, something one of your false prophets says, chew on the meat of what's good that they're saying and spit out the bones that you don't agree with but make sure you're always going to tie it back in uh, to, to the text, to the Word of God, to the Rhema Word of God. And I promise you, you'll calm down. There'll be a peace that comes on you because God, He's still in charge. We're in control. We get to choose how we want to live every day, right? But very few of us, and I say this, I know a lot of you do, uh, very few of us actually go study the context, go study the, the, the region, the people, the go deeper. Like there's four levels that we can go into. Some of the things we learn only come by the Father. Like Peter, when he said uh, to Jesus, man, you're the Messiah. And he said, wow, nobody could tell you that except dad in heaven, right? So there's things that God loves to give us, 
But anytime I get revelation like that, a rhema word, I always go find it in the text. I always take it back to the word of God. So God bless you. I love you. Have an incredible Wednesday night. I know you want some of my French fries and my fried chicken. Talk soon.